we're back. Game number two of our second and final best of three of the day. Mal's taking on Team Liquid as Liquid looks to extend their win streak to 14 straight series. And they have just been unstoppable. And Mal Sports found that out pretty quick in game one. It only took him about 28 minutes um, to notch. I, I guess you could call it a comeback, but uh, Mal's looked good early. Just when Team Liquid sees control around, uh, say, 10 minutes in. Mal's never really had a chance to get back Wind in it. Liquid service. looking to continue that success with Mouse the Sports front three of Venomancer, Bad Rider, and Windrunner. Mal Sports, though, going to go ahead and take away Quakeva's Nature's Profit for their own, as well as uh, snag up the Vengeful Spirit, too. I'm your host here in AC Chambers, and to Lynn, the inside and analysis as always. Welcome in once again, Ben Merlini Wu. And I mean, we kind of talked about it towards the end and at the. Uh, the stat screen at the end there, Ben. I mean, this is this Team Liquid squad is just playing so tight and playing seconds, so remaining. consistently that you got to step out of your comfort zone, especially if you're a Mouse Sports Five squad seconds, who remaining. is already a pretty heavy underdog. You got to do something a little bit weird to try and throw this rhythm off from TL. Reserve time. Maybe they can go for, or I thought maybe they could go for like some sort of Pugna strat or something. Uh, we've seen, uh, I think, underdogs take uh, some wins against. Favorites with that sort of strategy, with that potent push and that very potent nether ward too. But it looks like they will ban it out for themselves. I don't think they can beat Team Liquid at their own game. Uh, just similar, like you know, ganks here and there with a very cookie cutter lineup. I think they have to uh, just go something a little bit different. Yeah, they're going to have some. Well, I mean, the Beastmaster pick. You see that with the Nature's Prophet. I mean, I'm kind of a little confused as to what they want to go here. You've got one roaming support. You've got one hard farmer that you that can be a plus one, can be a pusher. And you've got the Beastmaster. But, I mean, Beastmaster Roar, I guess, is a counter to Bad Rider's Lasso. That's okay. But um, the BM being picked up here, I guess it, it, the only thing you can really glean seconds, from it remaining. is that maybe some kind of a push strat they're going to have. Uh, minus armor from Vinge. They might try a level remaining. one Roshan, actually, now that I think about it. Having the armor reduction, having Beastmaster... Uh, for his aura, and then having Reserve Nature's time. Prophets tree, it's the tank. That's something, you know, again, I'm just trying to think of anything along those lines. Like you said, a little bit of a curveball, something to get you an advantage and give you a chance to take a surprise win in here in game two. And that's about the only thing that comes to mind right off the bat. Cool. If we saw them do a Roshan strat, I think that Team Liquid can scout it out pretty easily, though, with the power shot, even with the fire. Uh, just Venom Wars, they definitely need a damage dealer, though, either... Uh, bristle back with his viscous goo, which we've seen quite a few times, or even an Ursa. Yep. Um, we'll see. Uh, it's uh, could be very much an alliance kind of an approach here, where uh, NG1, of course, <laughs> probably the most yeah. famous, uh, first famous version of it, immediately no TPing with their tier to twos. Uh, they are on Radiant, so it's a little bit more difficult to do from the Radiant side than the Dire side, but. Again, maybe they're just they have a they have a lineup they like to run and they're just building it out as they go. Team Liquid gonna snag up Luna for TC, a hero on which he's very very comfortable. And uh, this is just a pretty well rounded lineup from Team Liquid. They've got good single target initiation with Bad Rider, pretty solid fighting potential early on with Windrunner's power shot spam, a good shackle of course can swing a fight either way. Luna with uh, Lunar Blessing to help add some damage as well. Team as uh, Eclipse, of course. Nice magic damage in conjunction with Venomancer's Mass AoE with uh, Poison Nova. This is, I would say this is just a Team Liquid squad that's going to do what they do so well. They're going to protect TC. They're going to find farm and try to find picks where they can and then just force Mouse Sports to execute into remaining. them instead of vice versa. And Admiral Kunka comes Five out from Mouse Sports. This is something different, but I don't think it's that amazing in their lineup right now. Uh, he's going to have a fairly time. difficult time killing people, I suppose. Like, they might do, like, a Venge Kunka dual lane on, uh, I guess they're on Radiant, so they would probably do it in their safe lane. Or, I mean, it could be the roaming Kunka that Crit loves to run so so often. Yeah. Um, we, we we saw Syndrin do that, actually. Well, I, well, Syndrin was on the Kunka once. We've seen them kind of juggle that back and forth. I mean, you see a Beastmaster pick up. It's hard to tell if that's going to be a mid or an off lane or a solo lane Beastmaster. He does tend to benefit a lot from being overleveled, of course, but um, Bounds is certainly a little bit wide open and ambiguous, at least at the very moment. We're waiting on their last ban to come out. Um, Team Liquid, though, I mean, TC just always seems to get a hero he likes. He's uh, on Luna this time. We've seen him do really well on Weaver in past series as well. And, I mean, just looking at the front four here, I mean, if you're Mal Sports, what's the plan? I mean, you know how good this team's going to be at fighting, especially if the Bad Rider can get up a quick link. 
Uh, finding in the mid game is just going to be a forte for them. I mean, do you have a plan going in, or is there something in particular that you have as a goal, uh, hoping that you can accomplish early on? Mm, I don't think you play the farm game against Team Liquid because if they get an early blink on Batrider, their gank is going to be way stronger than Mouse Sports. So I think they have to take the fight a little bit earlier. Venge is really, really good early. Beastmaster definitely better um, with uh, low farm on both Batrider and the Beastmaster. And uh, the Kunkka Rome is... Decent, they can definitely get a kill on like Windrunner if she's in the offlane, on Luna if she's in the try on try, and I think rotate a lot with the Nature's Prophet early just to make sure you get at least like a five kill advantage early. And Mouse Sports, if they aren't like up by like three, four kills by like uh, maybe 13, 14 minutes in, I think uh, Team Liquid will just pick up their blinks and just play the same way they normally do and just, um, you know, kind of snowball and roll over Mouse Sports. So Mouse Sports has to just beat liquid early mal's right now looking for some kind of a hard farming carry i wouldn't hate i don't know it's a, such a hard call to make i mean do you go with just a true hard farmer do you go with something like a juggernaut something that's more i think out for yeah. uh, more minus armor yeah and they have the attack speed too from beatsmaster so i think that would be uh, pretty well and they would have a lot of physical damage too with the kunkka cleave vengeful minus aura and the minus armor from um, the Alchemist, they they have a lot of damage and they have sufficient to see. Well, I would like to see that out from them. And you have to bring the fight to Liquid before they get BKBs too. And Alk is a very good hero for doing that. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, it seems like that would be the optimum plan here. Liquid just, I mean, with the Viper pickup in particular, that's a dedicated mech builder and mech carrier that they'll have. Um, they should have a pretty quick mechanism so he will be rushing the item. Nope, they're going to go ahead and grab an Enchantress. So, um Looks like that, I mean, by all accounts, that should make that a uh, a farming Kunkka with a mid-Beastmaster. And this is a really, I, I mean, mean... Technically, it could be a carry Venge, but yeah. we haven't really seen it that often. Yeah, we'll see which hero Unicorn picks up. Um, this feels very thin. It is going to be Rise, so it's not going to be a carry Venge. It will be crit on the Kunkka, so it will be um, either a mid or a support Kunkka. We've seen crit do both. Unicorn's, Unicorn's actually going to be farming the Enchantress. Um, or at least he usually plays carry, or he, has, uh, he did in game one. Ace is going to be on the Beastmaster. Who knows, man? These lanes are likely to be pretty wonky coming out from Mal's, while Liquid certainly looks a little bit more stable with Bulba on the Viper, very likely to see him go mid. Way too on the support Windrunner, as well as Fluff back on the Venomancer again. He improved to 9-0 and on Veno with that win in game one, looking to make it 10-0 and with a win here. Prepare and, of course, Koikva going mid with the... Uh, uh, with the bad rider, one would imagine, and TC farming up the Luna. So uh, we'll see how the lanes take shape. I really like Liquid's draft a lot more than I like Mouse's, to be honest, though. Uh, yeah, I like it a little bit more, too. I think Mouse does have a lot more firepower early game, and they should definitely try and use that uh, to, uh, to great effect. Koikva, mm, I haven't seen his bad rider too much. Definitely not as often as Bulba's. Bulba will be taking up the Viper in the mid roll, and we see a support one runner babysitting TC in the offlane. That's a little bit unusual coming out from Liquid. Yep, Koikva's actually heading top, Bulba in mid, as you mentioned. Um, looks like neither team really interested in crossing the river, so we'll go ahead and run through the lineups. We'll have Rise on the Venge, as mentioned, playing in the support position. Ace is going to be on the Beastmaster, making his way down the bottom lane now as well. Link will be on the Nature's Prophet down in that bottom lane. Unicorn going to be running the mid enchantress and kind of a rarity you've seen it before but very rarely crit here on the kunkka on the other side of the river we've got tc he'll be on the luna she's currently in the dire side off lane koikvo is heading up to top he might be by himself as they might rotate uh, all the way down to bottom with the supports fluff on the venomancer will take an eye at this top rune spot the battle and begins here we go rune will spawn bottom and will be spotted and taken damage by way two so way two on the wind runner obviously starts out with a dd and our viper got to be taken mid by bulba as anticipated mm -hmm. and see already some aggression coming out from mouse early they will find it out way two and rice is in a lot of trouble here or maybe way two is up crit eating a lot of right click damage way two stars yet to put a skill point in probably could have hit a shackle there i'm a little surprised he or did win, yeah i think it would be one run too yeah a uh, shackle one and a half second it's like man i think one run uh it would have been pretty close either way yeah well fluff is on the way if he hits a shackle that probably gets fluff enough time to land a gale the range on gale much larger 
than people often give their credit for. But this is going to be a lot, very aggressive lane. I actually really love a lane support Windrunner like this in an aggressive position, especially with a hero like a Luna who's going to give you the flat damage bonus from Lunar Blessing. This is a three-ranged a hero lane up against Link with Gale, with Shackle, with the long range on Lucent being for a little bit of burst. This is going to be tough if they decide to dedicate all of their heroes here. Instead, though, it looks like Waitsu is going to make his way towards mid, and Rise and Crit already on the move as well. Yeah, it looks like uh, the Nature Prophet on bottom expected to be versus Batrider, and he had already started out with the early magic stick, but Koikva looks like he's about to take a spill. And He's on the left side, though, so in case they are smoked, he might... Uh, get it popped early. Wow, look at that awareness. And here comes Link trying to chase him down and Ace couldn't even get the axes off. Flies off the edge of the map and will stay there as long as he can. Now moving all the way back. Has enough to buy a TP if he wants it. Looks like he's just going to come back down to Earth. He needs to make a way through the trees before Firefly expires. And yeah, he just doesn't have a TP. He's just kind of there for 20 seconds now. And looks like Mouse is going to capitalize on that as they look to go ahead and put pressure on the Tier 1 top. In the meantime, though, TC is getting unfettered farm as we saw Link TPN up to top. Unicorn in mid is going to die. Yep. Using Nature's Attendance. Nature's Attendance is so annoying at this level. You can heal through so much damage. He's but... level 2 untouchable, too. <laughs> yep. First blood drawn by Fluff. As good as that is, not good enough to waylay enough uh, all of that damage, but this tier one at top slowly becoming a shambles down below half health and doesn't look like it's going to be challenged either. Yeah, they're pinging out Ryze. Ryze is still level one. He is very, very squishy. 370 HP. He did eat a Tango. Uh, yeah, looks like Koipa has escaped through the use of Tango. He's not using Firefly, though. And there it goes. Vinge takes the last hit on the tower, and even though they give up first blood, they manage to bring down the first building. Yep, I like it. Early aggression from Mouse, just fighting, um, you know, just very, very aggressively. And I like the four-man rotation. For them. Yeah, sure, they give TC a little bit of farm on bottom, but um, they still getting that early tower and freeing up that jungle so Batrider can't just do whatever he wants is uh, going to be pretty good for them. Yeah, I agree with you completely. Then this is what we were talking about. You know, do something a little bit different. Rise making his way over is going to run right into Way 2 and Fluff who are on the high ground. Actually didn't pop the smoke, just thought better of it. Fluff decides to go ahead and get a sentry down and doing their best to protect Bulba. Bulba off to a good start, 12 CS, but really 21 CS at three minutes for TC. Not too shabby, my friend. Mm -hmm. Not bad at all. And I would expect that TC is going to want to fight sooner rather than later. He doesn't have to. This lineup of Liquid is going to be able to stand on their own feet just this four if they want to run a space-creating kind of a strategy. Yeah, it depends on what Mouse does. Though. If they keep taking towers like they do and keep up the fight, then, yeah, he's going to have to fight early. But if they just, like, play like they did the last game, hey, we're going to play aggressively for, like, the first five minutes and then just stop, then he can just farm it up, go Midas if he wants to, just go Yasha in a BKB or something like that. He doesn't even have to rush BKB. And immediately... Mal's will be spotted out by that sentry as they cross over. Should have seen it coming. Bulba is going to retreat in the right direction. Rise, not going to be able to get off the magic missile. So that sentry paying for itself there. Way 2 was in position to come help if needed. In the meantime, Fluff rotating back down to bottom. And Link going to have to be very, very careful. TC, almost level 6 when he has Eclipse. The dive potential goes through the roof. And this is kind of what we saw happen before, unfortunately, for Mal's. They had some early roaming success, some early movement success. Then they started to move and get nothing out of it. The supports get underleveled, and all of a sudden, you just can't keep up in five-man. Yeah, but what's the deal with this Enchantress middle? Is she actually going to be able to do anything besides just maybe stay alive and be annoying with Untouchable? Yeah, it's tough. Um, I've seen it before, and usually it's predicated around very all-in push strats. And I wouldn't call Mal's lineup particularly all-in, except for the fact that the, the way that they've laned it. They are going to have to get a good start on Unicorn, and they are going to have to start pushing even more towers very, very soon. We can see the dive potential at bottom growing. Veno taking a poke around, but Rice is going to hook back up with Unicorn just to keep him safe. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I mean, Mouse, they're trying to get some levels right now, but it's not going too well for them in terms of that. Experience lead still in favor of Liquid right now. Gold lead just barely in favor of Mouse. Um, even after getting that early tower. So all in all, not too great for them. Fluff gets caught out on bottom. Fluff spotted out. And here comes the Eclipse, though. Fluff sprouted in and will be cleaned up with an auto attack. Didn't get enough damage to bring anyone down. Here comes another TPN. TC making a run for his own Tier 1. Will be able to make it. He's actually going Midas. And nice 
Torrent. Unicorn's there. Can uh, has some, doesn't actually doesn't have a single point in enchant, but not gonna need it as they manage to bring him oh. down. So see, Luna could have uh, just lose him being the nature's prophet. Instead, he chose to right click him, and that would have been an easy kill on Link, at least making it one for one. But uh, TC slight misplay there. At least he did bite his Midas recipe before he did die. And Link's, or Ace actually going to get eyes on Quakefoot. Quakefoot down to about a quarter health, and he's getting hit by the boar, so he's slow. Doesn't have Firefly. Fluff's coming over, but he's not going to get there in time. Buff, uh, Bulba will re-engage. Nice no TP. stuns. And Ace gets a free one. Three to one, and Mal's once again comes out swinging well here early on. Yeah, and that's the thing with this early tower down. The Beastmaster can just run into this area of the map, and uh, Quakefoot isn't going to be able to catch up so easily um, because of that. He does have 1,100 gold, so he's not too far from his Blink Dagger, but still, they have um, stymied his early early farm, which is very, very important. Just take Liquid out of their game. Don't let them just play passively and farm up. They have a Midas on Luna. They don't have, or they will have a Midas very soon on Luna. They don't have a Blink yet on Batrider. Now is the time to hit. Now is the time to play super aggressively all up in Liquid's face. Don't let them catch back up in the gold graph. Ace was looking for a roar there on Bulba, unable to find it. They are going to go ahead and loop around. And poking their nose up. We see this being pinged immediately by Bulba. He knows exactly where they're headed and Quakeville wisely will vacate the jungle as Ace and Crit go head hunting. Way too in the meantime is getting some levels. Has two points in the power shot so far. Down at bottom, TC continuing to soak what he can, taking a look at the overall CS. He is way ahead of anyone. The mid enchantress and Bulba both at around 30 apiece but 40 for TC still tops on the board. Up atop, way too We'll be able to make it away. The axe has actually uh, split him there. But uh, I, I, Mal's is keeping the pressure up. This is what they have to do. You just hope they don't run out of gas like we saw in game one. Mm, yeah, it's very, very important for them to do it. And it looks like TC may die on bottom. He's so close to his Midas. Uh, brought down and could not have timed it better. Rise leading off with the magic missile. Another well-shot torrent from Crit and... Link there for the extra little bit of right click, and they're going to go ahead and try to push a tier one off of this. They are really doing well with this. This is the kind of thing we were talking about here, Ben. Doing something a little unorthodox. Mm. And I think that, yeah, the Midas build is just, I mean, it's okay if you think you, um, like, need the late game security, but they already have the better heroes for late game. I think they just need to get past this early and mid game phase. Just go drums, just go treads, and then just fight. Uh, mouse if they want to bring the fight. It's not like they can't. They have the Batrider, even though he doesn't have uh, Lasso yet or his Blink Dagger, he will have it up very, very soon. They have plenty of damage from the Venomancer and the level 7 Viper at this point. Um, so I don't think they lack in damage, or, and he doesn't need to like <laughs> have items to compensate for that. He just needs to be able to survive the ganks and let his teammates react to them, because that's what us that's usually what Liquid does. Bait out Koikva or TC in the counter gang. Looks like Koikva may die again. Koikva caught out with the roar. Uses Firefly, not enough. Take a look at Unicorn's build, by the way. He's gone treads. Triple no. Yep, three no. The That's tri -null. so good if you can play aggressively, though, which ex which is exactly what they're doing. Like, Liquid's always on the run, and that impetus is just going to hit so dang hard on those heroes. Yep. And I uh, really like the way Mouse has approached this. And really, Liquid, they feel a little caught unawares by this. Uh, Koikva unable to really feel relevant until he gets his blink. He's... Uh, just 300 gold away from it now, so he shouldn't be too far away. But TC getting the Midas, like you said, not really necessary. And they're going to they're going to feel very weak for the next uh, 5 to 10 minutes. And if Mal's can continue to keep this up, they're going to be able to build a pretty damn big lead. Here comes Rise, gets a stun off on the way, too. That's another free kill going their way. And Liquid really on the ropes right now. You, you know, you just get the picture of a bloodied fighter on the ropes in the first round, kind of gasping for air, wondering what the hell happened. Yeah, and they might lose a second tower or, uh, yeah, their second tower on bottom lane, too. Fluff is trying to be there to place Plague Wards, but what is level 2 Plague Wards going to do versus 4 people? Tier 1 bottom. Now lies in rubble. And Crit picks up a set of Arc Boots, so doing quite well in the support position here in mid. Tier 1 going to take a little bit of damage, but the reaction is there. And there's a Sprout on the TC. Has Eclipse, so... They wise. I mean, Luna has 663 HP right now. Yeah. 663. That's so little. Mm -hmm. No survivability at all. Has a Bassy, basically. Six armor is what uh, TC can claim and going to get the Lucent Beam off on the Hawk there. 
but definitely a lot of a uh, lot of ground to cover for TC if he wants to be able to stand up to the punching power, the firepower that this early mouse squad has, especially the way they built uh, themselves. It's going to be a four staff pickup next on the Enchantress, by the way. And finally, Koikfa's blink is up. Now, this is where Liquid should be feeling a little bit more comfortable. So long as Koikfa's positioning is okay, he should be able to turn most fights around if he's quick to react and if he's in the right place at the right time. I think they still need one item on Luna before they fight, like, preferably a treads, I think, and then they can start fighting. But she cannot afford to die anymore. She's already really far behind at this point, and she looks like she's really close to a... Uh, Trez, but Crit and Beastmaster are making their way up top. If she gets roared out, she is just going to die. And is she going to be able to clear out this wave in time? I don't think so. Here we go. Ace going to be coming up from the Southern Woods. This should be a free kill. And there it is. Roar, Torrent right on the mark. TC brought down again. And here in mid, they're actually going to re-engage. Rise gets hit with the shackle, doesn't latch. Now Koik was there, manages the lasso out link. Nice swap, though, from Rise to disjoin it. They still might be able to follow this out, though the Enchantress coming in. And turning things around. Now Fluff might likely to get picked off by Impetus and Will. Two for one, the exchange. Here comes the boat. And coming in from the side, connecting on no one. But two for one exchange, Liquid down eight to two right now. If Luna finally finishes her treads, but Ace is split pushing top at the same time. This, this is the Mal squad I think we've all expected to see. You know, they're they're having to do something a little bit different to try and catch Liquid off off the mark. But we know how good this team can be, and we're seeing it right now. Yeah, uh, the only problem is like, do they really have a late game skewer? Is Enchantress actually going to be able to do that much? Uh, I don't think so, especially not versus BKBs. Um, and does wait, does Impetus go through BKB now? I think there was a change that allowed it to. I'll have to double check. Here one here in mid. Will be a nice deny attempt coming out of Bulba. Unable to connect on it though. We see ping outs immediately. Ace is in the jungle. He's going to be joined by Crit. And they made. Yep, they are smoked. Poigva, lasso up in 15. And they're spotted. TC gets off the lucid beam. There's the eclipse just in case. Quake was going to try to burn him down and run him down. Crit caught the shackle shot from way too. Off goes the poison over. TC roared out, brought down again. Here comes the boat. Ace runs through it. And Quakeva doing his best to burn out Rise, but they just don't have the damage right now. They lost one for nil. And they will be able to finally get one down. So it's a exchange of a support for a carry. TC, as good as his farm has been, he's at 0 and 4. I mean, that doesn't matter how many CS you have in the first 14 minutes. If you die four times, you're just not going to be on pace. And really, right now, Maus is exploiting that. Yeah, he just played so greedily in the early game, going for that Midas and uh, just farming out way too far by himself. And Viper is very underfarmed too. Like, Boba hasn't died yet, but he only has treads and not even mech yet. And Bulba right now sitting at 1-0-1 oh, just hasn't been involved in that many fights. Mouse has really done a great job of fighting away from the strengths of Liquid's lineup. I mean, obviously, their strengths being the bad rider now that he has Blink. Um, the AoE potential, the five-man potential from Liquid is quite high. And uh, they just have been dissecting it. They just really have been using a surgical approach to not allow Liquid to put all the pieces together. And uh, that's Is the solo mid Enchantress the new, the new best thing? Not, not just solo mid Enchantress. Three Null Talisman solo mid enchantments. That's what I want to see. Mech is done now on the Prophet as well, so Link adding a little bit more five-man prowess to this squad, but more than more importantly, adding some more push. And really, they've only got their Tier 2 still standing while Mal's uh, is still hanging on to every single Tier 1. Map control completely in their favor. Yeah, they are doing very, very well uh, right now. And Goalie has extended to about 7,000. They need a mech, I think, if they want to keep up the aggression. It's just so good for tower dives. And looks like Nature's Prophet has already picked one up, too. So I like his build. Not going too greedy. Picking up the early phase boost. Uh, he does have a Midas, but that early mech is really going to give them a lot of team fight advantage if Liquid wants to decide to do that. So Liquid, what they had to do right now is just get uh, easy kills with the Blink Dagger. And, ooh, wow, getting diving over here. That is... That is super ballsy. There is no TP coming out. I think Koifa wanted to go on them um, if they had a TP, but oh, Unicorn looking for blood too. 
And here comes plus one for Mouse at the very least. Torrance actually going to catch Koikva. He's x back and cleaned up. So Koikva hanging around all by his lonesome. They're going to be able to track down Unicorn, taking a while to bring him down because of Untouchable. Finally, he's down. And uh, they do have a mech up. Or no, they don't actually. I thought Bulba had his up already. Not quite. And the tier one at top, though. Got to be brought down without being contested. They're going to hang on to their glyph, it would seem. Yeah, I think they should have been up there on the top lane. There were only two heroes there at the start, and then Furion, like, TP'd in slowly. But uh, Lukoifo was in position to lasso after he did dodge the initial game. And there is finally the um, ult or the mech on Bulba. It looks like they will get a free kill on Ryze on bottom. Yeah, getting a couple of free kills for a tower. Not always the best decision. Uh, mech is now done on Bulba, though. And with the mech, mech up on the Viper, this is where Liquid needs to force fights. And forcing fights so much easier said than done, especially against the very mobile squad here out of Mal's. Um But, yeah, this is where their five-man potential needs to come in. They've got the Blink up on the bat. They've got Viper and all of his mid-game potential plus a mechanism. Way 2's not in bad shape. Max level power shot going to give them a little bit of extra magic damage. Venomancer at level 8 um, has maxed out Plague Ward. Plus his, uh, plus his ultimate. And we'll see if they can do it. I mean, right now, though, Mouse is just outplaying Liquid. You have to call it that. Up top, Koikva's dead again. They cannot keep losing the bat this way. Koikva is at 1-4 and four now. Yeah, I think he just needs to be on the aggressive or the counter ganking. He's not the split pusher uh, on this particular lineup. I think, like, Viper is much better bait than he is because he already has 1,100 HP, probably around 1,300 if he switches his treads and it looks like Ace. Gonna get caught out down here though. Yep, Im impetus damage from a distance helping out. That's gonna be oh, a little more. Might get picked off too. Yep, ran into the creeps, and that's what it took. One last auto attack. Way two's right there. Has wind run up in one second. Shackle, not gonna latch. Now they're gonna look to turn it around as way two wind runs away. And Mal's hooking up their remaining four. I'm a little surprised they didn't want to take a fight yeah, there, but I didn't. I thought they would too. They have the mech up. Quick is alive. That would have been a four on five for them easily. But I mean, you can just tell how scared they are. There weren't any creeps there either, so Eclipse would have just completely oh, rough. Greedy, greedy unicorn. That one catapult not worth this. Can they track him down though? Four staff was there, fluff doing what he can, and finally managed to bring him down. Now with unicorn down, Roshan might be an option. They've got the mech up. They need tower gold just yep. like so badly for them right now. I mean, I think Roshan is a pretty good attempt, but only if they have the, this, these two T1s down. Like right now, they just need that quick uh, infusion of 1200 gold. And looks like Fluff is trying to place wards, but ends up getting caught out. Yep. And there's no way they can do Roshan right now. They take the tower for free. He did get off the poison Nova, so Crit's going to have to hoof it back to base. He doesn't have really the potential to fight, certainly by himself. And no TP. And let's see, are they going to continue to push here? Looks like they're I thinking about it at the very least. Quaifa's... They should not. Absolutely not. Quaifa heading into the jungle to find a little extra gold. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and bail out. So uh, Link did get a little more split pushing done. Speaking of Link, he's up to 2,700 gold right now. If he wants to uh, if he wants to start working on a Scythe of Ice, he'll have the Mystic Staff up very soon. Yeah, and TC went with the Trez drums, and now that he's finally recovered, he is starting to show some signs of life, the early Midas. Uh, I mean, it's okay now, I guess, but so they did not escape unscathed from that early game. We already see a Scepter up on Ace, and Unicorn's going to have a Scepter relatively soon, too, so uh, we see a Blink Dagger on Crit. It's a little remarkable. Maybe, maybe that's why Koiko has been dying. It's a... Maybe he just picked it up, I don't even know. He had it at bottom. Here we go. It's going to be a lasso back and the roar and the swap to disjoin it. Koikva going to end up blown up. Liquid trying to re-engage. Here comes TC. Oh, he's going to be stunned out of his eclipse. There's the boat. And the damage done even without the boat oh, damage. Oh, full bug gets caught too. Mecking through all of the damage. Liquid is just on the run. And Mouse Sports looking better than they've looked, honestly, all season. I haven't seen them look this good in a single game since before the International. That's just saying the squad labeled under Mouse. Totally different team for the most part. But uh, they're playing damn well. Yeah, Koikva's Batrider is not terribly impressive. Like, he wasn't 
he doesn't approach from like the tree line because you don't want them to know when you're about to lasso to them. Nature's attendant was popped before he even got the lasso off. So even had he been able to do that, even if, had he been able to drag him back, it still would not have been a very quick and clean kill on Unicorn just because they don't have that much magic burst on them besides Eclipse. And um, they, they, they really want to blow two ultimates on them probably, but they, they always have to worry about the defensive swap to counter initiate with the roar too. So it just has to be like very quick and clean just uh, he also needs to farm up his four staff too, but one and five on him. We need to see like Bulba on this one. Bulba has to be the tank for the team. He has to go up there. He has 1400 HP. He has 11 armor. He has corrosive skin. If he soaks up like a torrent boat, an X, a vengeful spirit stun, and or a couple right clicks from Unicorn and the roar, then they can win the fight from there. Then you uh, go in once they blow their couple. Of Blow a couple of spells, even just lasso the ventral himself, so that they don't have to worry about the swap breaking it, and then just let Luna uh, and Luna and the rest of her team just clean up after that. But the way they're initiating these fights is just so so poor. The big test for Mal's now going to be: Can they crack a tier three? They've done an excellent job of outmaneuvering Liquid, and to be honest, outplaying them. Here's going to be a Here good pick go. on the Link. TC's right there. It's going to use the Eclipse and the Mech. Got to help buy some time. That's all it buys. Yeah, they, did, they wanted to secure that kill for sure. Yeah. The Orchid actually was bought before he dropped, so not a lot of gold lost in that case. And we can see Koikva trying to hustle his way home. Going to have to blink to safety. And uh, just about has a four staff up now as well. But TC's BKB is going to be up soon. And this is, again, the test for Mal's. Can they crack a Tier 3? They've done an excellent job so far of outmaneuvering them and of just completely... Um, Cutting apart Liquid's mid-game plan. But cracking a Tier 3 against the team with a Bad Rider, with a Venomancer, with a Windrunner, that's certainly a different story entirely. Blink Dagger on Beastmaster is certainly going to help, though. Give Ace the initiation advantage to go with the Scepter. Yeah, that's going to be really, really... Uh, scary for Mouse, and yeah, they're ahead, but are they far enough ahead? The gold yep. graph has dipped about 2,000, uh, actually, it's still around 10,000, I was looking at experience graph. Yeah, gold graph, about 10,000. They can't really secure Roshan right now, and they can't secure a T3, and Liquid's about to have their uh, BKB up on Luna, which is a pretty big turning point in the game. They also have the four staff up on Batrider, too. It looks like they may attempt to uh, do this T3 on top, and I think it's the right move. It's just really, really risky at this point, though. See if they got it. TC still stands. BKB needs another 1,000 gold. This is their golden opportunity. There's the roar on the TC. Can they bring him down? Poison Nova only got a couple. Here comes the boat, and Crit manages to notch a mega kill as they mech through what little damage was done. Oh, Koikva missed on the blink lasso. The tower's still up and alive, though. And this is the problem. Again, they got a kill. That's great. They spent the roar to do it, though. And now they've just got to reset, reload, and hope they can somehow whittle it down. The Their damage on towers is just so pathetic, too. Yep. Oh, nice shackle on Ace. Let's see if they want to come out. Bulba will go ahead and throw out a little orb damage to go with the Venomous Gale. But with the, the Plague Wards, which have been maxed by Fluff, with the Power Shot spam, with... Uh, firefly damage, everything else, you name it. This is just so hard for them to push into, and I don't think, like you said, their lead is is big enough. It just isn't. Roshan has to be a part of their equation. The question is, can they safely do it? They didn't even force out a glyph from Liquid. That's how poor their damage is uh, when it comes to being on the tower. They did get a very important kill on Luna, died yet again, and, like, really, they, she can't do anything, even with a BKB, because the Blink Roar is just too much for her to handle, because she's just gonna get torrented and then boated right after. So what they need to do is just, like, force staff her away so she doesn't get uh, hit by any of those spells, but she has to be facing the right direction. But as long as she can dodge a stun right after, then she should be able to pop her BKB, and, really, we just saw like, the right-click potential on the tower. It's gonna be very, very similar on Luna. Going on Link one more time. They smoke down the lane. The Orca did go off on Waitu, and he's going to mech through this. He's hitting very hard. Nice shackle, though. Power shot there to try to help. Waitu's going to win run away, and Link does burn down. And Waitu whew, only had a couple more auto attacks. In the meantime, at top, the glyph is finally popped. Here comes the buyback from Link. He wants to push off of this. Ace has yet to spend his roar. They need every ounce of anti-push they've got, and they certainly have a lot of it. Even Flame Break adding to it pretty effectively. Tower is low. And here they go. They break it. Yep. Tier three's down. Top tower That's big. Denied. And they actually denied it, so <laughs> taking the gold out of the equation at the very least. So forcing a buyback out of Link is kind of a big deal, though. Um, he is at this point.
becoming one of the more reliable late-game damage dealers as we get past 25 minutes now. And we'll see how Mouse wants to play this out. The lead is definitely theirs, though. 10,000 gold, give or take, in favor of the underdog Mouse squad who trails this series 0-1 and wants a game three. I think they do Roche ASAP and then still try and fight Luna before she gets her BKB. She's about 400 away, but if they kill her one more time, she's not going to have buyback and they can take, take a rag. So I think they should force the issue at Roshan. It's going to be up to Quakewood to stop this. And Ryze grabbing up the flag. Roshan. Sitting up on the high ground. And Liquid's not taking the bait. Sitting back, at least for the moment. And looks like something was just drawn out. Yeah, it was Unicorn drawing it out. Link's going to move on in. He's got fair enough right click that he can do this by himself. It'll take him a while. But Oh, here they go with a blink. Oh, nope. Thought about it. Looks like Liquid's just content to, to sit back and wait. Roche very slowly dropping here to just Link alone. The rest of Mouse Sports just waiting for Liquid to take the bait, but TC's just Liquid's farming the wondering jungle. why it's not dead already. And they're still playing so safe. Finally, they see some help head into the Roche pit, so they're going to end up taking a free Aegis. Is that the worst decision by Liquid? Uh, they do. They did really need to farm the BKB on the Luna, but her items are just like just a little bit too slow. Like her Midas was like 30 gold off the first time she died. She didn't have treads the second time she died, and then didn't have her BKB for the top push. So, I mean, it's just one bad thing leads to another. TC just not having a great game here. But can they? actually break a rex at this point looking at top lane it's already pushed all the way out so unless they just want to buy a pass without creeps they can't take the top racks at least not anytime soon and here we go quick but gets the last one a unicorn nice swap from rise getting unicorn oh, back out swap. of trouble 65 seconds now until there's another lasso and getting that they on even use down. a drum charge for that on yep. tc and Unicorn. That would have been so big. It would have. And we saw right there, right before that happened, Unicorn tossed out one impetus spear at TC, and it took about one-fifth to one-quarter of his health. You can still see a bit of a chunk, and that's with regen. Um, this is do-or-die time for Team Liquid. This is going to be TC's first full-fledged fight on Aluna with at least a little bit of survivability. In the meantime, Link is split-pushing top. This is a naked set of racks up here. So Liquid is going to have to account for it as the rest of Mal's now moves up. This could be the beginning of the most important fight of the game. And Ace goes in, gets the roar up on the Koiko of all targets. There's the Poison Nova and the Eclipse going off. Boat's going to catch three, though. TC able to survive it through the BKB. They're going to mech through the damage. And Liquid trying to hold serve as best they can. Unicorn going to have his Aegis popped, and the rest of his team is zoned out. Unicorn, the man left behind. There's an X Torrent. Not going to connect. The Shackle actually didn't connect either. He's so slow because of Viper Strike. Link's going to be hit with the Lucid Beam. And Lasso wasted completely by Quick, but he might regret that. Would have had another kill. But Unicorn brought down again. Double kill for Koikva, making up for some early missteps. Crit going to have to blink away. He is so slow. Viper Strike's there. More Sticky Napalm. One auto attack brings him down. And what a catastrophe has occurred to Mouse in this top lane. Had the Aegis, had the Naked Racks, had everything they needed, just not enough to break Liquid as they feed four plus an Aegis, and Liquid lost nothing. What a great play out of TL. They just had a little bit too many items. Like the Viper Strike on Viper, or the 12 second Viper Strike on Viper just makes Enchantress so useless at this yep. point. Yeah, she has a lot of items, but can she actually do any damage? No. And firstly, there's the PKB she has to worry about, and then it's the constant uh, the constant Viper Strike. She doesn't have any attack speed items. I mean, she has shreds, but uh, that's still going to put you at very, very slow attack speed, and uh, like even with the Aegis, she can't do much. So I'm really scared for a mouse right now. After that pushes repel, like the momentum completely shifts in favor of Liquid, and they're not going to be able to make another attempt at that Rax for quite some time. And then now Luna is going to have another item. She'll have buyback in case she dies. Bulba's going to have another item by the next time they push. They don't really have control of the map right now, so they can't do Roshan when it respawns. And Mouse is in a very tight pickle right now. And especially if Liquid gets like a T1 and another T2, the gold graph is pretty much just going to be at zero. And as Nahaz has pointed out, following that, look at the dip in the experience graph. Despite trailing the entire game in towers and map control and gold and every metric imaginable, not just a, a minor trail in gold, five digits at one point, now cut down to almost half of the lead that uh, Mouse had built. Liquid 
It was do or die time, and they came through in the clutch. And this is where little things start to matter, like the fact that Link, as well as he's played, has died four times and bought back once. Um, he's got 3,200 gold, so he'll be able to add another big item. But he's really their most reliable source of damage moving ahead. It is a support Kunkka. He's gone uh, dagger plus four staff, so he's not going to be able to contribute a lot outside of his skill set. And Unicorn is just, like you said, he's almost neutered, thanks to Viper and Viper Strike. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, Mouse wants to take that Rex so badly. They didn't even get any damage on the range or the melee Rex. And I don't exactly know what the, initiation, what the initiation was about. They just need to roar Luna and just burst her down before her BKB. She doesn't have that much HP. 1600, it should be uh, fairly easy to kill her with the Torrent Boat, Roar, Axe, uh, Venge minus Aura 2 with uh, just Impetus. Uh, from the Enchantress, and then they need to save the swap for the Bat Rider. So they don't really need to worry about Bat Rider. As soon as he lasso's, you swap, boom, you're in the clear, and then just burst down Luna. That is probably priority number one. They need to kill Viper too, but the problem is they can't burst him down. He has 1800 HP as well as a mech, and he is just way too tanky at this point. Ace and the rest of Mouse looking for a pickoff right now. Is Liquid going to give it to them? Bulba and Quigfoot down in bottom lane. We are going to see the rotation now out of Mouse. Bulba's made his way into the jungle. Koikva just hanging back. He's got boots of travel. And, you know, just coming back to that fight at top for a second, that was kind of bizarre, too. I even kind of slid something in about it when I was doing the play-by-play. -play. Of all targets for him to roar down, Koikva, who had just wasted his lasso, it was still on cooldown. Um, just a little bit of a mental mistake, as you mentioned. TC, undoubtedly, the target you want to have for that and one of many little things that cost them. They're unable to get the smoke together either. And this could be a desperation push coming up. They're going to at least shove the lane in. And uh, we can see very aggressive warding coming out of Mal's right now. They've got eyes on the jungle as well as the secret shop in this bottom lane. And they're going to go ahead and move up. If they lose this fight, it could be a complete switcheroo from where we were just 5-10 minutes ago. The push begins... There we go. Viper Strike on the Unicorn. Are they going to come out? Nope, not going to do so. And Nature's Attendants helping to heal him up. A lot of Treants here, but being spammed down fairly effectively. Tower is down to half health, and here we go. Quick, but looking for something. And manages to catch Unicorn. Four Staff is there. TC's there. The roar through the BKB. Off goes the Poison Nova. There's a swap, but it's going to be too late. TC pops the Eclipse. Both will connect. But it doesn't matter as he's able to BKB through the stun and the damage. Quick is there looking for a target. Three down, make it four. Ace not going to be able, able to get out so long as he's taking right click and his blink dagger is unable to go on cooldown. That's four for nil again. And Liquid now, I'm going to give it about 30 seconds to update the goal graph. This is just, a, again, a cataclysm for Mouse. They had such a good early game. They were just crushing Liquid in pretty much every metric. Now, because of two lost fights, they've just run out of gas. It really it, That's what it feels like, like the engine that was driving this composition has just flat out died. Yeah, now Liquid gets a T1 tower in mid. They can pressure the T2 even because two heroes don't respawn for another 30 seconds. They can do the Rose Shield when it respawns because they have a Venomancer ward in there too. And now Mouse, like what do they do? Their late game is just is just atrocious because all they have is an Enchantress with a Scepter who doesn't do anything versus BKB and who just constantly gets Viper Strike. And this is why Viper is just such a good hero. Like no matter how much farm their carry has, you just completely shut them down with it. And Mal's definitely on the ropes now. Six and six for TC. He now tops the boards in terms of kills, managing to bounce back from an 0 and 4 start. Five and 0 for Bulbas Viper, who was a little slow out of the gates. Um, his item progression coming a little slower than he would have liked, but since he did get his items up, he's been such a huge part of Liquid's success here in the later phases of the game. Five and one on crit. He's played a very nice support Kunkka, but. Can't do it all on his own. Five and two on Ace as well, but they're just not getting what they need out of the Enchantress anymore. And uh, the Nature's Prophet, with that Orchid, what has he done? Um, you know, he's done a little bit of split pushing, so on and so forth, but they just need more right click out of him. And even that's a chance. Yeah, that would work too. Invisibility. Fluff's Veil making quite a big difference too, by the way. He picked that up a while ago, and uh, we saw it used there. And now the BKB's up on Viper. What in the hell are they going to do to kill Bulba and TC? I am not sure. 
Not sure at all, but certainly not the force that blinked at Gran Kunka with one level of Tidebringer. <laughs> that is not the physical damage that they need. But I mean, that's not his fault. That's the role they put him in, right? And that's the that's the way they drafted. So like now, the weakness of their draft is starting to come through. You make one mistake, you have one bad fight, and then you lose all momentum that you have. Gold graph. Look at that dip from ten thousand all the way back down to zero yep. within the last. 10 minutes of the game not even 10 minutes of the game and like things are just looking worse and worse i don't expect that slope to trend outwards anytime soon and that's the shame of it it took malos about 26 minutes to build a 10,000 gold lead and less than 10 to lose it and don't know that they've got enough in the tank oh, butterfly on luna too yep and roche respawning now Big guys back up. We'll see who's going to be the first team to spot it. Looks like it should be Mal's, as I'm sure these are on the way. Will they get in in time? No. So don't know that it's up. And this is actually really unfortunate. If Waitu throws that power shot out and sees he's up. And this is a fight they're going to be hard-pressed to take, especially if Koikva's in proper position. Koikva, who had such a terrible start, really. I mean, he's still sitting at 4-6. and six. Not the best bat play we've seen out of him. Hey, he's nonetheless made up for it a little bit. I mean, he's still had a couple of mental lapses, but his positioning much better and being able to get the Enchantress into the base with the lasso uh, to defend the Tier 3 bottom, um, absolutely essential to Liquid being able to initiate on their own terms. And just look how scared Miles is now. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, looks like they know that Roshan is up. They can force a fight here. And the DD on Luna. How fortuitous is that? Look at him. Hitting for, like, 420 damage right now. They're just, like... No way Mouse can contest this. They do need vision over there. Where is the Beastmaster Hawk? I don't know if Quick Plus got it out or not, but uh, Beastmaster Hawk is not there. You're sitting in trance. It is going to be too late, though. TC is going to be able to nab this Aegis for free. Here it is. TC grabs it. They mech out. Quickfa heads home, back through middle lane. and I don't know. I mean, let's put you in the captain chair, Merlini. What's the plan, man? We're 36 minutes in. You're... Your lineup and your composition worked perfectly for about 30 minutes, and then the wheels just completely came off the wagon. What do you do, if anything? What's the plan? Rad Dota with Necrobooks. That's <laughs> pretty much all they can do, and uh, just try and avoid the Bat Rider ganks as much as possible. I mean, they kind of need a way for Liquid to push in order to do that, uh, but Liquid doesn't feel any pressure to push. That's the problem. They can just set up their T3, and Mouse can farm all day, but they still won't be able to break the base. Uh, they're trying to take control of the jungle, but Koikva happy to farm the enemy jungle and Bulba happy to sit and farm bottom lane. They're going to have to respond or they will just go ahead and take this tier 2 bottom and we can already see them moving back out of the jungle on the dire side and towards mid. So at 37 and a half minutes in, Liquid now leads the game for the, for the first time in about 30 minutes. They had a slight lead as you can see right here at a couple of minutes in, but we finally did cross below the zero line once again and your heart just goes out to Mal's. I mean, you can't call this a throw. Um, it's not. Mal's lineup, they just peaked a little Someone too late. Like to differ. <laughs> nah, it was, yeah, it was, I mean, it did peak a little bit too late. They just had very little room for error in their lineup, and they played the first, like, 20 minutes oh, so very, very well, though. And, uh, yeah, maybe, like, a support out instead of a Kunko, just because out can, like, catch up and transition much easier. Yeah. I think that would have worked out very well for them. Or just a different hero for mid, like a, not like a Storm, but like an OD, let's say, who has, like, decent uh, lane control. Um, it's not that great versus a Viper, um, but you get the idea. Just, like, someone who can do as a mid uh, and fight a lot early and still uh, scale really well into the late game. We can see, even though look what I'm sure senses, just how big of a lead or how big of... I mean, it, you know, you look at the goal graph and you say, oh, well, they're in the lead just slightly, and that's true. But their lineup is just so much more well-equipped for this phase of the game when this size of items begins to come out that the lead is actually, in reality, much bigger when all factors are taken into account. So I'm sure they sense that, but they're still playing very safe. Uh, we can see them running predominantly together. They're not trying to make a lot happen with Koikva right now. They just want TC to farm up. He's already got up his Morbid Mask. He's got 2,600 gold aside in the bank, so most likely going to be a Helm of the Dominator into Satanic now. Mm -hmm. And the waiting game will continue, but, I mean, Liquid's perfectly okay to do this. The Goldcraft is actually settled uh, for the past five minutes, but 
Looking at Roshan, yeah, about three minutes left on that. Is Liquid going to actually take a fight with it? I guess they deem it too risky at this point. Looks like Luna does have buyback in case she wants to go for it. I mean, like, how long are they going to wait before they actually try and pick a fight? Like, TC can still get bursted down during a roar, but that is still very highly unlikely, and she has the Aegis of the Mortal on her. Yep. Coming up on 3,100 gold aside for TC, and I think he just wants a Satanic. At the point he gets a Satanic, he's going to feel nigh invincible, and we're going to have Quake Bump. Grabbing Link out once again. Bulb is there with him. And Link brought down very easily. He's down for 75 seconds. And I don't know. Does he have my back? He does. And, yeah, looks like Liquid's just happy to take that for what it's worth. Yeah, they're just buying time for TC. No doubt about it. And really not far away at all. About 1,700 gold, and he'll have that satanic. Way too in the meantime has picked up a blast for himself. Has a force staff. As we've seen time and time again, BKB up on Quakeva, and TC just continuing to find what he needs. And uh, at this point, hell, even Fluff feeling pretty, uh, pretty fat. He's sitting at about 8,500 8, net worth in a 40-minute game. It's not bad. They're just so far ahead. And chat trivia as we wait for the final fight with a 919 record. Which hero has the worst win percentage of any with 15-plus games in D2L? Season four. You got any guesses, Ben? Uh, I was browsing through some other stats. It said that like Queen of Pain had like a miraculously low win rate, but I'm not sure if I've seen her that enough to, in D2L to warrant that sort of pick. Um, I have no idea. Do you? Uh, it's tough. I uh, Bat Rider, I think. Um, Bat has has struggled in D2L play. It might be. Um. It's so tough to call because a lot of the, you know, 15 plus isn't that many in, in all practicality. Hang on, there's a blink lasso onto Ace. He's brought back and bursted down. Beastmaster hasn't been been in 15 games, I don't think. Luna, maybe. Yeah, maybe Luna. Yep, 7 and 13. Yep. Good guess. We just, I mean, just thinking about heroes we've, that we've continued to see over and over again, we just haven't seen a lot of good bats, to be honest. MSS has struggled. Quake has struggled on and off. And in the Pretty East, much everyone but S4. Yeah, basically, that's how it goes. Same with Mag. Magnus, uh, played by anyone but S4, is just kind of trash this season. Yep. Yes, it is. Liquid, yeah, full control of the game right now. Uh, Ace did get picked off there. He, I mean, he's decently farmed too, but, I mean, he has a scepter, but they don't have enough bursts to kill people before BKBs, and Heaven's Halberd, also not very good versus BKBs, and Blink is nice for pickoffs, but Liquid has just been running around, like, as a pack for most of the game, so it's just so difficult for them to uh, pick off Liquid. And that's the thing, like, Liquid... Uh, like they split up early and they just like split push on the farm but when it comes time to not getting picked off and defending their T3s they're very good about not dying except Fluff actually looks like he's about to die with the gem right as yep. I see that. Oh nice swap can they do anything with it? Nope no way to lock it down Rise had magic he's missile profit can come. Here comes crit oh there's the X Shackle didn't latch that's surprising and here's the eclipse from the high ground Link eating a lot of damage. TC lost vision for the Lucent Beam. He will be able to make it away because of that Unicorn, though. Not going to be so lucky. Right click out of TC is legit. He is hustling and bustling, but Bulba there to slow him down, and TC still chasing him down. That's going to be another big kill going their way. Prophet is building pure right click at this point, has added the MKB, and that's exactly what they have to have. They need something to deal with Luna when she has her BKB up. But uh, Prophet, obviously not the most mobile hero. Doesn't have a Force Staff even. Does have a Scythe of Ice, though. And Marana, actually, is 9-19. and 19. Has the worst win percentage of any hero with 15-plus games in D2L Season 4. So Marana and Bad Rider in D2L just not faring well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and their desperation smoke right now. Uh, very close to when Roshan potentially spawns. It could be two minutes at the earliest. But Aegis and Chi should pretty much seal the deal for Liquid. Like, even though they lost two supports right there, like, pretty much before the fight even started, or actually Woodrunner didn't die uh, that early. But, yeah, I mean, even though two supports were caught way far out of position, Mal's still unable to take a fight. Looks like they are smoking, trying to get top tower. Nature's Prophet is a good chunk of damage. Look at his items. He's 3, 6, and 11, but he has uh, MKB... 
and Orchid and Scythe Vice and Mech. I don't really like the Orchid build. It's like who's a good versus it's decent versus Windrunner, but he has MKB already for that. Luna has BKB. Bat Rider, you're usually not gonna find. And uh Venomancer, you don't need Orchid. And Viper, you don't really need Orchid either. So yep. I mean it's like I, I would have preferred him to just get a Scythe of Vice if he wants like some sort of disable slash utility and then go another damage item instead. And we might have an engagement. We will, as Koikva finds Rise, brought back, shackled out, and bursted down. And there's the flame break on the ace. He's also got a stack of sticky napalm. There's the roar on the TC. Can they counter initiate? Viper strike from Bulba makes him immobile. And really, Mouse caught with her pants down. They had a chance to collapse on that. It took him a while to bring down the Venge, but uh, they make they're going to catch up with Crit if they're not careful. He does manage to blink, just not enough. Uh, not enough range to right click him to put the blink on cooldown, but this should be the death of the last outer tier tower remaining now for Mal Sports. And with Roche coming back up, then it's actually going to be a sizable ish um, respawn. So another couple of minutes, but Liquid in total control this is with the back feet. door. Yep. Radiant's top tower has fallen. And Link trying to do what he can. But this, you know, the problem with a carry nature's prophet is he just can't, you know, he's not a hero like Aluna who's going to be able to get in and mix it up right in the front of a fight because she's so over farmed. Like, carry nature's prophet's very susceptible to burst. And that's why we're not seeing him do much but split push at the moment. Eventually, he's going to have to do something. But the question is, is Liquid just going to be able to overwhelm them? Yeah, I mean, even the Venomancer has a Lincoln Sphere. Like, what in the world? <laughs> Why are Liquid supports like always so farmed? And oh, look at Wait too, too. He has like almost 5,000 gold in his inventory. They're gonna have a sheep, and it looks like another Batrider pick off. That's bad news. I don't know that he. Nope. Oh, he does now. I was gonna say he looked like he was just short of buyback, but has it by literally like a dozen gold. But yeah, Liquid just now waiting out Roshan. He's gonna be responding in just about 15 seconds. They check it again. Here in, yeah, Fluff will probably toss a ward, and they'll see it come up very, very shortly. Shiva's done on the Windrunner now. Once again, support's getting gigantic. And we'll see them double back out of mid in just a moment. Should be about, yep, there it is. Perfect yeah, time. And Luna's, like, very close to being six slotted too. Or if she drops a town port of school, sells her hand of Midas for a Manta style. I mean, she's pretty much almost there. 46 minutes in the game after a 0-4 start and a very, very late Midas. Roche down to half health. Here we go. No contesting out of Roche Mouse Sports at all. Roche drops. Aegis goes to TC. Bulba will be happy to take the cheese. And TC very close to a Manta. If it's not on the way, it probably is, and it is. It already is on the way, yep. And this should be your death push. And it's going to take a small miracle for Mouse to stand up to this. Smoke or not. Yeah, it really is. There's the magic missile spit and wasted on Fluff. Rise down immediately. Unicorn force staffed into the woods, but burst it down. Crit. Makes his way back to the high ground. Yeah, they call it. Not even going to give him the satisfaction of bringing down the tier threes. Liquid. Look at that. 10,000 gold was the advantage of Mouse at their height. 12,000 the advantage by Liquid by the end. Probably the biggest or at least a top five biggest turnaround in all of D2L history. As Liquid weathers the storm, avoids a game three, and takes a 2-0 win finishes their D2L Western schedule six and one, finishing in second place in the overall standings. And they're going to be waiting in the grand finals of our bubble race playoffs for whichever team plays their way through. So they are just one win away at this point. They'll have to win one best of five against one of the other three qualifying teams for our playoffs. That being Navi, as well as a fanatic. And then whoever comes out from evil geniuses or Virtus pro but, uh, yeah, I am, I am in, impressed beyond words with Liquid's play, not just in this series, but across the entire Western schedule. What has gotten into this team? And I, I wish I knew so I could put it in a bottle and sell it to Dota fans. They are playing magnificent. Yeah, I mean, don't take away credit from Malso. They still oh, yeah. hung in there very, very well in the second game. Uh, they didn't have Sinrin, so uh, I think that hurt them a little bit. But still, they played very, very well in the early game and met just need to continue on their mid game but at least they uh, got that early game totally unlike last game so they're on their way they're getting there
Very nice performance coming out of bounce back, I should say, coming out of TC. He started the game 0-4, finished up 8-6 with 3, or excuse me, 629 gold per minute average. Quick was bad rider, finished a little above break even. He had a bad start, finished up 7-6, and six, but really, Bulba's Viper um, doing such good work and keeping them in this game when it looked like they were down and out and ready to be kicked into game three. Finishes 7 0 and 14. And the support play is always out of way to 1 2 13. Venom Mancer in particular was involved in 22 of Liquid's 26 total kills. I mean, Fluff is just everywhere. That makes it 10 and 0 for him, by the way. 10 straight games won when Fluff gets his Venom Mancer. So you want to talk about the VNV combo? You now have to worry about banning Veno and the Visage for way to. Otherwise, you're giving them a huge, huge strength. And that's to say nothing, of course, in Bulba's Clock, um, TC's Weaver, uh, Koikfa's Lone Druid, Koikfa's Prophet. Very, I mean, it just kind of snuck up on all of us, but Liquid is quickly becoming an alliance-type team where you just can't ban against them. It's so hard. Basically, um, you know, you're picking your poison. That's all you can do. It's going to be poison one way or the other. And... Um, any final thoughts on the way out the door? I mean, for this game in particular, well, of course, there are closing credits and all, Ben. But, I mean, again, Liquid just looking so good. And now that they have completed their Western schedule, I feel like they are quiet. They have quietly become probably the third best team in the West. It might even be the second best team. They beat Navi, like, pretty convincingly. And mm -hmm. I don't think that was, like, really Navi on that big of an off day. So I would definitely like to see the uh, Liquid and Navi match up again. And we might see it on our race to the playoffs. Yep, absolutely. And I'll talk about the bubble race coming up uh, uh, here in just a moment. I'll also talk about it tomorrow. But for now, 47 minutes, 40 seconds, the only time it took for uh, Liquid to engineer this comeback. They finish up 26 to 18 and win the series 2 to nothing. I'm your host here in AC Chambers. Thanks so much for being a part of the broadcast here today, guys. Of course, Ben and I appreciate your support. If the uh, voice you're hearing on the under end of the mic is Ben Merlini. We'll make sure you check him out. You can find him. He's at Merlini. That's actually me. I'm pointing out. I always forget I got to reverse it because of the monitor or whatever. Uh, Merlini Dota is where you can find him. You can also find me at AC. And uh, before we head out the door here, Ben, uh, any final thoughts, any last uh, comments to contribute? And, of course, let the fine folks know where they can find all of your awesome educational content, be it from betting rares to playing really, really good news. Uh, you can find my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Dota, Facebook and Twitter, and Twitch, all the same slash Dota. Thanks to all you viewers for watching. Uh, thanks to uh, Kingston HyperX to, uh, for helping us out with this tournament, and thanks to all the teams that's participating giving us a very exciting series and the western uh unfortunately is going to be concluding tomorrow but it's going to lead to a very exciting playoffs too absolutely and thanks to you ben uh, an absolute pleasure to cast with you as always our final western matchup will be tomorrow and there's going to be quite a lot on the line there are two teams whose fate is completely in the balance fanatic is guaranteed to be in our playoff picture there's no doubt about that um, they might improve. I can't remember. I, I actually think they're kind of locked into their current slot in terms of C. But what matters the most is Virtus Pro and Evil Geniuses. EG is able to get the best of Fnatic tomorrow. Uh, they play their way into the playoffs and knock Virtus Pro out of the playoff picture. Whereas if Fnatic gets the win, VP will be in the playoffs as our fifth and final C. Now, um, coming up, it's going to be the first week of December. It, it, to the best of my knowledge, we are working with some of the other tournaments to make sure there's not a whole lot of overlap or a lot of conflict. Uh, but the way a bubble race playoff works for the uninitiated is we have our first seed, which is already Alliance coming out of the West. They've already direct qualified to Las Vegas. They won't have to play a single other match. Um, they're just going to be joining us in our grand finals in Las Vegas, which will feature four teams. The other team who has already made that jump is LGD China out of our Eastern Division. Now, in a bubble race, we have four other teams that qualify for the playoffs. That's going to be um, here, in the, uh, here in the West anyway. Team Liquid, Navi. Fnatic, and then either EG or Virtus Pro, depending on the outcome of the match tomorrow. So, uh, four teams. The first, uh, the top, or the bottom two of those, uh, of that four-team group, which will be, of course, Fnatic and whichever other team remains or makes it in, be it EG or Virtus Pro. They'll face off in a best of three. Winner of that will move up to face the third seed. Winner of that will move up again to face the second seed. So, uh, what this essentially means, Liquid finishing as well as they did, they're already just one series away from going to the Grand Finals as they'll meet uh, whichever team manages to play their way through the bubble race in the meantime. So, uh, again, still so much on the line. Just one more best of three, though, coming up tomorrow, and we'll be done with the entire group stage of the D2L 
Western Division. Hope you guys will join us for that. It'll be kicking off at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, noon, if you're uh, an East Coast gal, <laughs> guy or gal. And, of course, um, that'll be at 1800 in Central Europe. So hope to see you then. Until then, uh, yeah, it's been a HyperX production in conjunction with Razor Monster Energy, Astro, and, of course, uh, Razor Monster Energy, Astro, and Kingston HyperX. There we go. Uh, hope to see you guys back tomorrow again. Uh, Fanatic taking on Evil Geniuses with our final remaining playoff slot on the line. Until then, enjoy your evening and enjoy some donuts.